Hello everybody, this is James Steele IV of The Wealth Coaches, where we teach people how to learn from history and reap the rewards. Today we're going to talk about small business tax savings, a tax perspective of why you need a home-based business. Some of the topics that we'll be covering in this video will include a reality check, uh, showing people where we are financially as a nation. We'll play a video by Sandy Botkin, a CPA and tax attorney based out of Utah. We'll show you some of the taxable benefits available to you as a business owner. And we'll show you how to increase your net worth by 470%. That'll put about $4,000 to $16,000 extra tax refund back in your pocket every single year. And I'm going to show you an interactive spreadsheet example, uh, how to pay for your business many times over using those taxable benefits, and turn your daily activities and social interactions into legitimate tax deductions. And we have a technology tool called TaxBot that will simply audit proof your tax returns for CRA and IRS purposes. All right, let's take a look at the uh, reality of the situation here. In Canada, we are heavily indebted. We owe $1.8 trillion in debt as a nation. In 1990, Canadians only owed 85 cents for every dollar of annual disposable income, and now that has grown to $1.63. Meanwhile, Canadians are saving only 3.6% of their incomes today, which is down dramatically since 1990 when we were saving 12%. And here it is graphically. You can see on the left side here the savings rate back when I started as a financial advisor in 1992. We were putting away between you know, 10 and 14% of our money towards retirement savings. And the debt was only about 83%. Today that has grown and in fact reversed the trend. We now have about 160% debt and we're only saving between uh, 3 and 4% of our, our annual income and that's not very much. The International Monetary Fund uh, revealed that Canada's economy has two main vulnerable uh, areas of risk being the overheated housing market and household debt. And the McKinsey Global Institute says that seven countries worldwide here are currently with unsustainable levels of debt and Canada is one of them. We have what uh, a lot of people call financial cancer. Uh, the total debt owed by all Canadians at the end of March was a record $1.8 trillion and mortgage debt made up $1.29 trillion of that. Now to put that in perspective, if you could spend $1 million every day, it would take you 2,740 years to spend a trillion. So if you take $1.8 trillion, that's just about 5,000 years it would take to spend $1.8 trillion. Now in 1999 all the way up to 2012, this is how the debt has grown in these various classifications. Uh, anywhere from about 44% on the low side, well negative 5 on one of them, but up to 222% is what our debt has grown in just you know, 13 years. That is definitely not sustainable. And the Bank of Canada estimated last year that Canadians' uh, housing market was overvalued by 10 to 30 percent. And the most vulnerable part of that is the 12 percent of households that are highly indebted with a gross uh, debt to income ratio of 250 percent. Now, they hold 43 percent of all the household debt in Canada, so clearly that's a problem, especially when the 12 percent are composed of the very young people age 21 to 35 with an average income of only $65,000 and with 97% of them owning homes in Alberta, BC and Ontario clearly this is a potential problem if those uh, younger age groups get laid off. Most people in uh, Canada the, uh, the debt that's being carried is carried by those under age 55 and Alberta has the highest average household debt of any province in the country. We're at about 125,000 average debt two years ago, as opposed to the rest of the country's only about 75,000 nationally. Now Albertans, uh, we tend to uh, feel that we're going to have uh, a very serious problem with our finances. About 35% of us feel that way. But overall, Canadians are fairly optimistic. The Chartered Professional Accountants of Canada say high levels of indebtedness continue to make Canadian households vulnerable to changes in the economy, yet fewer are taking the financial planning measures that are needed to prepare themselves for potentially negative financial shock. So clearly a reality check is needed. Now, if you do not change direction, you may end up going exactly where you're heading. 
All right, back in 1978, someone making $10 an hour driving a brand new truck uh, was able to buy that vehicle for $6,800, rent out a house for $300 a month, buy gasoline for $0.60 cents a gallon. Food and insurance was also cheap. Now that same job installing air conditioning is paying roughly $20 an hour, but that same vehicle costs $40,000. The house is $1,400 a month, six times as much, and gasoline has gone up four to five times. However, food and insurance has gone up almost seven times. And this is why people have to work two jobs, or three jobs in some cases, just to try to make ends meet because of inflation. All right, let's talk about one of the big problems here is that there's 10 million baby boomers in Canada, 76 million in the U.S., and these people are all starting to retire. They started in 2012, pulling out $1,000 a month from old age pension and another $1,000 a month from savings. So uh, that's coming out of RSPs and thus the stock market. Now, $2,000 a month times 86 million individuals works out to $172 billion a month that are going to start coming out of the financial services markets. Now, in 2008, when we had the financial crisis, there was a net of 500 and some billion dollars that came out between 2008 and 2014 or so. So in just about six to eight years, uh, that amount of money came out. And we're talking about pulling out $172 billion a month. What do you think that will do to the financial markets? Well, the government tried to stall this by printing $85 billion a month in money, uh, injecting it back into the system to try to keep this bubble inflated, but it's impossible to keep it inflated forever. And now we're just several trillion dollars more in debt from that monetary easing policy. Thus, financial collapse really is inevitable. It's just a matter of when, not if. And we could see a 1929-style Great Depression again in this century. So if you don't start saving for yourselves, you may be caught up in that uh, financial collapse and not have anything to live off of. All right, so let's take a look at the five steps to money mastery, we call them. The first step is saving money and making money, protecting money, managing that money, and growing the money over time. Today we're just going to focus on saving money. And there's some techniques to that. We have the ability through one view to monitor cash flow, do some smart budgeting. We also have some tax efficient strategies that we can teach people. But the main things we're going to talk about today are starting a small business from home, converting your personal expenses right now from employment income into business deductions, and then properly tracking that for CRA and IRS purposes. Now Robert Kiyosaki, one of the most successful investors of all time in real estate, he says building your own business is the best way to become rich, then you can begin investing in other assets. Now, why should you own your own business? Well, let's listen to Sandy Botkin, a CPA and tax attorney, and see what he has to say about why you should own your own business. Hi, this is Sandy Botkin, author of the best-selling book, Lower Your Taxes, Big Time. Over the past 20 years, I have taught thousands of home-based business owners how to save millions on their taxes. I spent three years in the tax department of the international accounting firm Tush Ross and also five years as a legal specialist in the office of the chief counsel for the Internal Revenue Service. Currently, I'm the CEO of the Tax Reduction Institute. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to explain why you'd be brain dead not to have a home-based business. I believe you will find that this is going to be the most important four minutes of your life when it comes to your financial future. So you may want to take some notes and put aside anything that might distract you. First of all, I want to emphasize something right up front. The rich know something that most people don't know. They have a secret. And the secret is that we have two tax systems in the United States. Now, when I say that, most people think that there's one for the rich and one for the poor. And that's not quite true. There's one to make you rich, and then there's one to make you poor. There's one for employees, which is designed to take your wealth and make you poor, because you are taxed on dollar one. And then there's one for self-employed individuals, which is designed to create economic growth. And the reason for that is that small business generates over 70% of the job growth in North America. It is not IBM, it's not Microsoft or American Airlines, it's small business. 
so Congress passes good tax laws for small business. In fact, the important point is that small business get to take deductions first before they pay any taxes, unlike employees who have to pay taxes on dollar one. You can save big money by taking advantage of these good tax laws. And these laws are available to you in business, whether it's in full-time in business or part-time or just in your spare time. It doesn't matter as long as you run your business with an honest expectation of profit, which means you're really trying to make money. In fact, if you know what you're doing in a small business, you have the potential to write off part of your house, your spouse, the equivalent of your kids' education and weddings. I'm not kidding when I say that, by the way. You can set up a pension plan that makes any government plan seem paltry by comparison. The potential is just enormous. Good proof of this was illustrated by a lady named Jane Bryan Quinn. Jane Bryan Quinn is a nationally syndicated economist. You may have heard of her. She is a nationally known commentator on personal finance with books and columns read and trusted by millions. She did a study of a couple who made $40,000 a year. And $40,000 did not go that far. So the husband said to the wife, Honey, you got to go out and get a job, which he did. And she made an extra $20,000. Now they're looking at their bank account and they see no difference at the end of the year. I mean, she's making $20,000 more than she made the year before. What's going on? Did you ever hear that you have to have two incomes to make it in this country? Do you know why? You're about to get a six-month financial planning course in the next few minutes. Follow along as I show you why the extra job was the wrong decision. The following example is based on 2009 tax rates. On that $20,000, they have to pay $4,845 in new federal and state taxes. Most of that was non-deductible. They have to pay Social Security of 7.65%. On $20,000, that's $1,530 of Social Security, which is non-deductible. We assume that they drove 10 miles a day round trip. And that's probably pretty conservative, I think. But let's go with that. 10 miles a day round trip, five days a week, 52 weeks a year at IRS's current 55 cent a mile rate. That's $1,430 of commuting, which is non-deductible. We assume lunch is at work, and we assume that they spent $7 a day, five days a week, 50 weeks a year. That's $1,750 of lunches, which is non-deductible. We assume that you have to have clothing, better clothing, in fact, if you're working, more upkeep, because now you're working, you're going to have more dry cleaning, and that's gone up by at least $1,200 over not working. And finally, with both spouses working, you think they want to cook? Heck no! They want to eat out, where their food costs have gone up by at least $2,000. And what about child care? I bet you they spend at least $125 a week in our example. And I'm not sure we can get childcare for three kids for $125. But $125 a week, 50 weeks a year is $6,250 in childcare. Most of that is non-deductible. In fact, all you get is a little bit of a credit on that. Out of the $20,000 that they've earned from the part-time job, they are only left with a staggering $995 a year. They're putting in tons of hours working, they're putting up with a commute, and they're putting up with a boss that is spelled backwards double S-O-B. You know, I know it sounds funny, but it really isn't. And people are working two jobs, three jobs, and nobody is able to watch the kids. So what's the answer? The answer is to take advantage of the greatest tax write-offs available in America. And that is by having a home-based business and working that business like a business. Nothing can be better than that. Because if you know what you're doing, you can write off, as I mentioned, part of your house, your spouse, the equivalent of your kids' education and weddings. You can set up a pension plan that makes any government plan seem paltry by comparison. And there's much more than just the tax benefits. For example, you get tremendous time freedom. You can work out of your home. You dictate your own hours and not be subject to the boss's whims. If you need to go somewhere or go to your kid's basketball games or go to your son's or daughter's music lessons or concerts, you can do that. There's no commute. There's no liability or very little liability with home-based businesses. You don't have any employees. And 
you can make unlimited income. And that's probably the most important factor for having a home-based business. There is no glass ceiling of any type. Having a home-based business is probably the smartest thing that anyone can do. And what amazes me is that people will work overtime to try to get ahead in a company when, frankly, they should be putting in as little time as possible to avoid getting fired and getting a part-time home-based business going. Who knows? Maybe that business will generate enough money where you can quit your job altogether. Wouldn't that be nice? That's the point. Having a home-based business will generate enormous benefits for yourself and your family. It's something you should really consider and it will make your life a lot less taxing. I would strongly encourage you to carefully evaluate and get started with your own home-based business today. The tax benefits are incredible, but a home business has so much more to offer. Extra income, being your own boss, financial security, setting your own hours, working from the comfort of your home, more time with family, and the list goes on and on. Most importantly, you are working on your dream instead of someone else's. Now that's the beautiful thing. All right, so that was a great video. Uh, although it does say a lot about the U.S., uh, the same types of deductions apply equally in Canada. So don't panic. That all you saw was the United States on that video. Um, so t some of the taxable benefits available to business owners, um, you know, you have an incredible ab ability to deduct everyday expenses such as your car, your fuel, insurance, maintenance, mortgage, utilities, entertainment, vacations, medical and education expenses, and hundreds of more deductions. Uh, you can pay tax on the remaining income after the deductions rather than on the gross income before deductions. In fact, one of the things you can do is incur uh, losses in current taxation years. So if you just start your business today and you don't make a lot of money right out the gate, it may take you a year, two years, three years to really start making a serious amount of money, but yet you've got all these uh, expenses that you can write off today. Well, what you can do with those uh, expenses is carry them backwards up to two years in the United States and three years in Canada and get back tax taxation dollars that you've already paid or you can carry these losses forward for up to 20 years. And the only requirement is that you have an expectation of making a profit in your business, not that you actually do make a profit. So this is one of the key things that most people miss. Uh, you don't have to make money in your business to actually save money on your tax return. All of these deductions can be written off against current income from other sources. Um, there's about 500 different taxable deductions that are available to us. Most accountants only know about a third of those, about 150 of them. So it really depends on who you're working with on an accountant, how effectively they can deduct a lot of these expenses for you. But you need to capture them, report them, and let your tax uh, preparer deal with that. All right, now it's uh, a fact that the average household net worth of self-employed individuals is about six times higher than those who are only working a job. 1.3 million for self-employed people and only 225,000 for employees that have a traditional job. All right, so let's take a look at an interactive example here. I'm gonna switch over to uh, my tax effect spreadsheet. So let's take a look at some of the typical expenses that people have. Um, in Canada and probably the US as well, we can write off about $670 maximum a month in an automobile expense. Uh, so I've got a number of 650 on here, it just happens to be what my vehicle is. Uh, gasoline, uh, if you drive moderately, probably $300 a month is an average typical budget. Insurance, about $1,200. Repairs and maintenance, let's allow $100 a month, $1,200 a year. If you park downtown and work downtown, Hey, you're going to spend about $400 a month on a parking stall in downtown Calgary. And let's allow uh, maybe one car wash a month at $20. So right away you can see that on a $40,000 vehicle, there's about $1,600 in expenses that you're incurring right now as an employee, but you're not enjoying any tax savings for that. All right, so we're going to minimize that one down. Entertainment, let's say you eat out once a week, $50, uh, that's $200 you'll be able to uh, accumulate as a potential tax deduction. Let's say you take a trip once a year, $200 a month allowance for that, and maybe some other basic entertainment expenses becomes $100 a month in potential deductions. 
Uh, we've all got uh, these kind of fixed expenses for your home, um, such as internet, cell phone, a landline, long distance cable, maybe leasing out a computer or buying a new computer, maybe prepare some marketing samples, printed materials, you attend a convention, you read some educational books, and perhaps you have the core services that's available through our business here that uh, made add up to about $163 a month. All right. And then we got uh, uh, your mortgage. So let's say you're renting or you have a mortgage. $1,000 is probably fairly small for a mortgage these days, but uh, rent, that would be about typical. Add in the condo fees if you're in a condo uh, or a higher mortgage if you're not in a condo. Uh, taxes, property taxes, maybe a couple hundred dollars a month. Utilities, repairs and maintenance and insurance. That quickly adds up to at least $1,785. I'd venture to guess in Alberta most people are paying more than that. Now, if you look at this total here, we're looking $4,733 a month in expenses that you're incurring as a typical Albertan. And uh, that adds up to $46,790 uh, per year. That's a lot of money. Now, if you have a small home-based business that you're running from home, and you can turn your business or your, your use of your vehicle into a business trip simply by talking to someone while you're driving to and from various errands, to and from work, you now convert that legitimately, according to the taxation laws, that now becomes a tax deductible trip. So let's say we can write off about 80% of that. Entertainment, the government will allow us to write off 50% of our entertainment expenses. And all those other office uh, administration and, and, and utilities and so forth, we can write off up to 100% of those numbers. And what if we dedicate some of the office uh, space in your home, uh, sorry, as a dedicated office space, you could take maybe a certain percentage of a room or a dedicated room to uh, a home office, take some pictures that will be uh, use useful in case you're ever audited. You can deduct a portion of the common space, such as your home uh, hallway, your bathrooms, uh, access ways, any place that you use to maybe do a demonstration or have uh, clients over and present uh, any business uh, opportunity that you want to discuss. So I'm going to be really conservative here and say we can write off 25% of that. So if you look down this column, this is the after effect of being able to deduct these expenses as a business deduction. You can now deduct 1276 of the 1595 or about $15,000 a year for your vehicle, maybe about $150 a month or $1,800 a year for entertainment, your other expenses, all your office expenses, $10,000 there a year, and about $5,300 for your, your, your business office. So that could be $2,725 uh, a month or $33,000 a year that you can now deduct, which is roughly 58% of all of your expenses overall. Now, depending on the tax bracket you're in, if you're in the lowest tax bracket, your net savings for every $100 you spend, you're going to save $17 in tax. And if you're in the highest tax bracket, about 29%. Now, if you look at that, at this in total, in aggregate, that puts between $800 and $1,300 a month back in your pocket, depending on the tax bracket you're in, which translates in, in annual terms between $9,800 and almost a little over $16,000 a year. And don't forget, as you start to accumulate these expenses and track them now, just the very day you go into business, you can start deducting these expenses. You can carry these back two years or three years, depending on what country you're in, and up to 20 years forward, and then you can offset other regular employment income, retirement income, and other earnings uh, against those numbers. So that is substantial. And if you look at uh, uh, the net effect here, um, employees would put maybe $6,300 a year in, in, or sorry, a month in uh, income, $76,000 a year. Your nets uh, left over uh, as an employee is $500 a month, 142 there, 222. But if you look at the self-employed numbers, those, it's a dramatic increase in the amount of money you can put in your pocket. And these are some of the numbers that the average Canadian makes, $76,000 a year. Uh, in Alberta, we make about a hundred and a little over a hundred thousand on average, although that may have changed lately. Okay, so now that we've seen some of the tax deductions that are possible for being in, in business for yourself, how do we track all of that so that it, it will stand up to an audit with the CRA or the IRS? Well, we have a simple program. It's called TaxBot. It was invented by a, a tax attorney and a CPA. And here's a little two-minute video clip that shows exactly how this works. 
Save hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars a year with the push of a button. We call it One Touch Tax Relief. Introducing TaxBot. With One Touch, you can track all your deductible business mileage using the GPS in your phone. Here's how the unique TaxBot Follow Me system works. When you begin your trip, touch Start. Using GPS technology, TaxBot follows wherever you go, every turn. And when you get back to where you started your trip, touch Stop. You'll have an accurate accounting of the exact mileage of your trip automatically saved and stored in your tax box. One touch and all your receipts and expense records are sent to the cloud where they're stored securely according to IRS standards, which ensures you'll be bulletproof in an audit as long as you're following the rules. One touch links your mileage records to appointments or expenses. You can even link multiple expenses or appointments to a single mileage record. Plus 24-7 access to North America's number one small business tax expert, Sandy Bodkin. Learn the wealth-building secrets he teaches at Tony Robbins and Donald Trump seminars. Now that is one-touch tax relief. Tedious tax diaries and mileage clipboards are too cumbersome. With TaxBot, it's simple, easy, and lightning fast to record your deductions. What took minutes now takes seconds. On average, you can now log hundreds of deductions in an hour's time. Do the math. That's nearly $1,200 in deductions for each hour of use. And try our 30-day guarantee. If you use TaxBot for 30 days and don't accrue deductions equal to 20 times your monthly investment, we'll give you your money back. You're one touch away from saving thousands of dollars. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today. All right, so one point about that, that is a U.S. specific video, but it is applicable for Canada as well. Similar tax deductions, just the ratios are slightly different. All right, so after all of that, hopefully you can see the wisdom of having your own home-based business. And as Robert Kiyosaki has said, if I had to do it all over again, I would have started building a direct sales business. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation, and we'll hope to talk to you soon.